For a concept to become a product, an idea must go through a development cycle that includes design, analysis, and production. Typically, this cycle involves the marketing, engineering, and manufacturing departments, which may have different goals and priorities. This entire process takes time and money, often too much of both. Stereolithography, an exciting technology pioneered by 3D systems, is a method of making solid objects under computer control without any machining or tooling. We feel like we've justified the process entirely by reducing our product development cycle time from 18 months down to six months. Stereolithography uses liquid plastics that become solidified when exposed to ultraviolet light. A laser-generated beam of ultraviolet light is focused onto the surface of a vat containing the liquid plastic. The beam moves across the liquid surface under computer control, solidifying the plastic one layer at a time, as thin as five thousandths of an inch. After all the layers have been exposed, the completed part is removed from the vat and is ready to be examined and evaluated. In the next few minutes, you'll see how stereolithography is helping many companies bring higher quality products to market faster and at a lower cost. Well, here at GE, we're interested in reducing the product introduction cycle, and I saw the stereolithography process as a, a good way to make a, a quick and accurate prototype part, which definitely impacts the product introduction cycle. The primary thing that we're looking for is serving our customer. We're trying to reduce the cycle time during the development process for our customers. And this is a very important tool for doing that. For any product to be successful, it must satisfy a market need. Identifying that need is a time-consuming task, especially in the diversified and changing consumer marketplace. General Electric, the world's largest manufacturer of consumer appliances, was quick to start using stereolithography as a design tool. GE used to take months to manufacture prototypes for evaluation by consumer panels. Now GE uses stereolithography to make prototypes in a matter of hours. Most of our parts are appearance parts. They would be parts such as knobs, handles, and other parts that have aesthetic value. What we now do is we're able to take from our CAD model, create our stereolithography part, and with our stereolithography part, give that to our industrial design group, which uses it on a mock-up that they can send to consumer focus groups to see how they like the touch, the feel, and the look of the part. We then take it into production that is, comes directly from our same model, knowing that it's going to be exactly what the consumer first saw. Replacement body parts may seem a world apart from refrigerators and washing machines, but Johnson & Johnson Orthopedics, a leading manufacturer of hip and knee replacement parts, uses stereolithography to produce prototype prosthetic implants for evaluation by medical organizations. The speed with which they produce prototype parts has enabled the company to build strategic alliances with key medical organizations. In developing a recent new product, we were able to convince a key surgeon group that we would be able to turn around the product much faster than our competitors. And I feel like that factor alone contributed to us getting that working relationship with those surgeons. The response has been great. Uh, the surgeons love it because they're, they've been, I guess, trained or used to waiting on uh, us to create metallic parts for them. Now with this SLA we can provide these parts in usually within the same week when we have the meeting. The aerospace industry has been quick to take advantage of stereolithography. It's been difficult and expensive, sometimes impossible, to produce production evaluation models of high technology aerospace products. Texas Instruments, a major supplier to the U.S. military, has found that stereolithography provides a solution to this problem. The engineer is very ecstatic to be able to get a piece part in his hand, even something as small as this that they can evaluate, to something as large as a full-scale mock-up model of a missile that's currently under development that they can feel and touch and bring to trade shows and to their customers so that they can actually convey the design of what the product is. 
It allows us to come to the design conclusion or go through those design iterations that much quicker because the surgeons have a part they can touch and feel and make comments on it. It makes our meetings much more productive and uh, I believe makes a better design as a result of using this. As the design stage is nearing completion, analysis begins. Digital Equipment Corporation, one of the largest computer hardware manufacturers in the world, uses stereolithography to find simpler, more cost-effective designs. Well, this is a typical sheet metal part we make here at Digital. As you can see, the part's been formed, pierced, and welded. And this part would be typically assembled with a plastic component on top here, snap riveted. And uh, the part becomes very labor intensive to put together, and it's also quite expensive, somewhere on the order of $9 on a limited run basis. Uh, using the stereolithography process, we're able to take the geometry of the sheet metal part and the geometry of the plastic part, combine them, and produce a new part, cost us on a limited run, only 35 cents an iteration. Digital uses stereolithography to develop improved versions of a prototype. The stereolithography model of this tape receiver was used as a pattern in creating copies in several different materials. These copies were provided to the design community where a decision was made as to which material was optimum. It's not just a matter of form, seeing what a part looks like. Companies are using stereolithography to make parts they can functionally test. We've been able to take thing, uh, wing samples like this, quarter scale, and been able to use them in wind tunnel models. We've been able to reproduce the fine detail that you can find in an automotive lens to try to test the different optical properties of the stereolithography part and compare that to the glass parts that we now currently use for prototypes. Engineers are using stereolithography models in producibility studies. The biggest problem that you have with design on paper is whether or not the two parts will go together or three parts on assembly will go together. As this part right here and this part right here, when we designed it, we didn't know whether it would go together. But with the ability of using stereolithography, you can see that the part does go together and the engineer can see where he may have to do some clearance cuts if necessary. This component was designed using solid modeling technology. The stereolithography prototype showed us that some areas of the design would be difficult to manufacture. These areas were not recognized in the CAD model. Production is the third stage of the product development cycle. The SLA apparatus was originally justified as an R&D tool, but we were pleasantly surprised that our manufacturing group quickly wanted to utilize the equipment. Some of the ways they've utilized it is in tool development, uh, programming, proving, uh, packaging development, and things of that nature that make up the manufacturing area of process development. This has allowed the manufacturing engineers to be much more confident with the product before they send it to the production floor. Cascade Engineering, a supplier of injected molded parts to the automotive industry, uses stereolithography to streamline the mold making process. Traditionally, full size models are hand constructed and then duplicated into steel. There's a significant investment in the steel, obviously, that we want to make sure that we have the right product uh, being produced in that steel and use the SLA model to actually check and to verify the data that we have in the CAD system. So we'll be able to go directly from CAD directly into cutting the steel in these very, very large parts. Stereolithography models can be used as patterns for a variety of mold-making techniques. We think the SLA is, uh, is absolutely exciting technology. We think it's going to bring us into a new era in the mold-making process. We're able to use our stereolithography part to create a spray metal mold that we can then use for injection molding a small number of parts for testing and evaluation. By utilizing the SLA, we can use it to create a master. This master is then used to create a rubber mold, which we inject wax into, used in the investment casting process to create an actual cast cobalt chromium device. You have just seen how several major companies are using stereolithography to help solve design, analysis, and production problems. They are experiencing the benefits of greatly reduced time to market, as well as reduced costs and improved product quality. 
Stereolithography's unique ability to transform complex data into solid parts that can be handled and evaluated without the need for time-consuming manual operations offers universal benefits to companies that manufacture many different types of products. We've had the machine installed for just two months and been very happy with the results. We've produced a number of parts. Uh, it's fully lived up to our expectations. Uh, the system came up to speed quickly. The interface software has worked well, so we've been fully satisfied. The SLA is a very important part of this saving time during our development cycle. Uh, from the time a product is conceived to the time it's making it into a, made into a production part, we're going to be saving time as a result of using the SLA. We feel that we've demonstrated with our SLA equipment that we can turn around products faster than anyone in the industry. I always say that I'm a little lazy, so if I could find an easier way to do something, I'm interested in it, and I think my plant reflects that, and that's why we're interested in the stereolithography. 3D systems, changing the way industry brings new products to market. It is now 18 minutes after 8. It seems kind of like magic, but it's called stereolithography. You dream up an idea, plot it out on your computer, and then presto, out comes an exact model. As science editor Michael Gillen tells us, it's revolutionizing American industries. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, we've learned to make things, lots of things, quickly and cheaply. Unfortunately, we're not as good at designing things quickly and cheaply. No. For example, the auto industry spends twice as much money designing car parts than they do making them. All that's about to change, though, thanks to a remarkable new invention called stereolithography. Here's how it works. Suppose you've just designed a new widget, in this case, a new and improved distributor cap for automobiles. Next, you'll want to make a prototype, a test widget, before going on into mass production. In the old days, the auto industry made test models out of clay, a process both expensive and time-consuming. But with stereolithography, this computer uses a laser beam to literally create an exact 3D replica of your design. I think a good way to describe it is to call it a three-dimensional printer. Charles Hall is the inventor of stereolithography. In the broadest sense, you might say it, it does for engineering and manufacturing what the Xerox machine or the word processor or both of those do for, uh, for the office environment. In stereolithography, the solid object is created out of a pool of liquid plastic. The liquid plastic hardens wherever it is hit by the laser beam. So that as the laser beam traces out the design, the 3D model is created layer upon layer from the bottom up. Stereolithography is a boom to industry because a prototype that used to take months to make will now take just a few hours. In business, in manufacturing, they have a design that uh, they cannot evaluate it until they've made the prototype weeks down the road after the first design concept. And then they come to their meeting with the head of department and he looks at it and he said, that isn't what I meant. And they have to go back and spend all that effort. With our system, you get it the next morning, and the same group comes together that next morning. Doctors at the UCLA Medical Center are thinking about using stereolithography for cosmetic surgery. For example, if this were my skull, I could ask the computer to redesign my jawbone, my cheekbones, my nose, my brow, whatever. And then at the push of a button, I could stand by and look at the new me rising above the liquid polymer. Stereolithography is now being used to design jewelry like these fancy rings, perfume bottles like this one recently made for Avon, and computer products like the outer casing of this Macintosh modem. With stereolithography, we don't have to tool for prototypes. This product was made with no machining, no tooling, and no layout drawings for a machinist to read. So does this make a big difference to Apple computers? It helps us get products to market faster, and it also helps us make better products. Stereolithography turns human ideas into something tangible, and its future applications are limited only by the human imagination. Well, I think the technology is capable of what I call just-in-time manufacturing, which is what the world is trying to really do. 
which means that you would produce the part just as you needed it. Now, we're not there yet, and we've probably got five years or more of hard research and development, but think if we could make a whole car door in less than a minute without any tooling and change it by just changing the computer model. I think we would revolutionize the way industry works. Well, it'll really be interesting to see how scientists take this now and apply it in the future.